I have big plans for 2025, with a lot of things to organize, and while paper planners will always be my first love, there are some things that just work better digitally. In this video, we're going to be looking at my favorite digital productivity tool and how I'm using it to organize both my work and personal projects, including my wedding, which I'm currently planning. This video is sponsored by Notion, and to say that I was excited to work with them is a major understatement. I've been using Notion every single day for the past four and a half years, so it's become an integral part of my productivity system. And it's definitely one of the most robust digital tools I've used. When it comes to picking digital tools for productivity though, there are three main things I'm looking for. One, flexibility. Two, accessibility. And three, shareability. Notion ticks all three boxes, so let's have a closer look. When you first join up to Notion, you're met with a page that looks like this, which asks you what you want to use Notion for. This is actually where we can start to see that kind of flexibility creep into the system. And I have actually used it for all of these things. I've used it for work in terms of content making and such. I've used it for my personal life, currently organizing a wedding, and I've used it for school. Admittedly, I was a teacher while I was using it for school, but this would have been so helpful while I was a student. And if if you're doing any kind of learning project, Notion can be great for that as well. For the sake of this example, we're going to go with personal life. So pressing continue, it then asks you if you want to work by yourself or with others. This is where we can start to see that shareability being touched on. One of the main benefits of doing things in a digital space is being able to share that work with other people, whether that be part of a team or just your partner. For instance, with the wedding planning, I need Vogel to know what's going on. So I've shared that space with him so that he can work on it with me. In this example, we'll assume that I'm doing this one by myself. And then after this, it asks you some more specifics about what you might want to use Notion for. By selecting the areas that you have interest in, it's going to give you some templates for things that you can use to get started. One of the things that can feel quite intimidating in terms of paper-based planning is being met with a blank page. While it does have infinite possibilities, it can be a little bit daunting. So it's nice to go through, select the ones that you actually have an interest in, so you can see how Notion could work for you. Once you've selected any of the ones that apply to you though, then Notion is going to set up your workspace. And then we can peruse through those to see what kind of layouts or structures we can use in Notion. Starting on this first page, we just have a nice simple layout that has some checkbox style blocks. All of the different pieces of a Notion page are called blocks. So if I kind of hover over these, you can see that we have one here, We've got another one above it, another one above that, each of those individual entries being considered a block. You can also add different types of blocks though too. They don't just have to be checkboxes. For instance, if we bring up the block menu by pressing the slash key, we have things like just a text block. We have different types of headings, bulleted lists, numbered lists. The one that's primarily being used on this layout is the to-do list. But scrolling through those, you can see there are a lot of different types that we could include here. And this is again where that flexibility comes into it. I love Notion because you can really build whatever it is you want to have in here. If it just needs to be a simple page of text, totally fine. You can do that. If you want things to be separated into subsections with different headings, you can do that as well. Clicking off that though, one of my favorite types of layout that Notion has is called a database. And the reason that I like it is because databases are so powerful. Not only are they flexible because they give you different ways to view the same information, it's also really handy because you don't have to duplicate that information to view it in different ways. If I was trying to do that in a paper-based planner, it would require me to you know, draw out a table and then draw out a calendar and then draw out a Kanban board and then populate it with that information multiple times. By using databases in Notion though, I can set up the information once and then just view it in different ways. One example of this is the job application tracker we have here. So on this first page, we have it as a Kanban board where you can just drag things into different columns based on what stage it's up to. Or we could view it as a table in this all application space, which can be handy to see which entries have all of the information they need versus the ones that maybe don't. When it comes to picking my digital tools though, flexibility is only the first consideration. I also like to make sure that things are accessible and shareable. When it comes to accessibility, the nice part about Notion is that being a digital tool, it's viewable in multiple places. So it can be viewed on your desktop app, it can be viewed on the web browser, and it can also be viewed on my phone, which is really helpful for when I'm on the go and just need to note something down really quickly, especially when my physical journal isn't handy and I just need to take a quick note. 
In terms of shareability, any page in Notion can be shared. All you have to do is come up to the top right hand corner, press on the share button, and then type in the email address of whoever it is you want to share the page to. Once you've got their email address typed in, you can then specify whether you want them to be able to edit it, do you want them to just be able to comment on it, maybe view it but not change anything. Depends on the level of shareability you want to allow. But then once you've selected that, you can invite them to the page by pressing the invite button. While these are the pre-populated ones, the ones that came from selecting our interest areas, when it comes to making your own pages in Notion, it's super simple. All we have to do is scroll up to the top of your private workspace and hit the plus button to add a new page. From here, we can design whatever we want to. It could just be a page of notes. It could be one of those databases, table, Kanban board, anything like that. My favorite is always gonna be the databases. Pretty much everything I have on my Notion is in a database. So to get started with a database, we just need to come down to the bottom and hit on this button that says table. You don't have to have a database that is a table. It's just that most of mine, I like a table view first. From here though, we're gonna select that we're starting with a new empty database and we can start to build out the columns of our table just by pressing on this plus button at the top here. What kind of things we add to this table very much depend on what kind of information you want to record. So rather than talking in hypotheticals, let's look at some examples and have a look at my Notion. When it comes to the way that I use Notion, my primary use is for content creation and organizing everything that goes into that. So idea generation, scripting, planning when things are gonna be released anything. For the longest time, my content creation space was just this little guy over here called content schedule. And in here, the first view is a calendar because it works best with how my mind works in terms of being able to see what's coming up, when a thing's going to be released. Having this view first is very useful for me. If we have a little step back into the past though and have a look at my everything list, if we sort this so that then the posting date is going in the reverse order, you can see that the first video that I actually put into my Notion was my August plan with me from 2020. Each of these individual entries to the table is a page and I can click into those pages and see the kind of things that I wrote down about them. So the only note that I had here is, what are your goals for the month coming? That was probably a question that I put at the end of the video. The nice part about having all of this data in here though, is that if I need to go back and check on the script of a video, maybe use it as a template for an upcoming video or anything like that, I have all of that information in here. If we scroll on a little bit and get to some more recent videos, you can see that the amount of information I started to include started to change as well. Previously, I just had one kind of generic template for each of my videos, but as I started to diversify my content, I made different templates for each of them. For instance, once we get to 2022, you can see that we have a different style for a vlog versus the ones for the main channel. And opening one of these up, you can see that they each have different pieces of information about stuff that I needed to film, things that I wanted to say in the video. Rather than trying to organize all of that information in a bunch of different documents or in a journal where I have to handwrite everything, I can just put it into here. It would make it easily editable. I could change around what date things were gonna be posted on. That was very much the initial appeal of Notion was the idea of being able to move things from one date to another without having to cross a bunch of stuff out in my personal planner. Along with the calendar and the table view though, I also had my videos organized into a Kanban board view. This meant that I could see which stage of the content making process each of my videos were up to. And then when they get to a new stage, for instance, the Notion tour, I can just drag that across into the filming space because that's what we're doing at the moment. Because of how powerful I found this in helping me organize my content though, I wanted to make a template for this that other people can use too. Jumping over to my templates for Notion space, you can see that here as content planner. So in this one, it has a space for the calendar schedule so you can see at a glance when things are coming out. It also has the Kanban board view so you can see the different stages of the video making process and where things are up to. It also has a space for any ideas you have and then different content buckets that you can put them into. A space for everything on your list, whether it be an idea or a finished video or one that's still coming up and then a space for anything that is specifically finished with. Another nice part about Notion is that when it comes to populating something like this, you don't have to start with a blank page every single time. So for instance, in trying to populate your schedule, rather than starting with a blank page, we can press on the drop down for new and select the new page that has the little video icon here. Selecting that one, it'll bring up a template that helps you plan out that video, thinking about the idea generation, what kind of points do you want to talk about, what kind of call to action do you want to have at the end of the video, all of those things that when you're just starting out, you might not necessarily think about. It's all scaffolded into here so that you can really thoroughly plan things out and make the best video possible. 
I genuinely wish that I had this when I was just getting started. So this one is a free template that you can grab for yourself. Even if you're not thinking about making content in the video space, you could use this for other types of content as well. Or you could also tweak it and change it so that it fits in with another area of your life. Maybe if you work on a lot of projects or reports or something like that, you could use something like this system to help you schedule out the work for that. That one's linked in the description box below. But the other area of my life that I'm currently using Notion for is wedding planning. The system that I have over here is a little bit more simplistic because I am just getting started. But effectively we have the main page here that has the little ring emoji because it was cute and this nice banner at the top that I can change to a different picture if I want to. I just went and found a nice bridal photo online from Unsplash that is certainly not me. <laughs> Mainly because I haven't had my wedding yet. In this one though, I've just set it up as a simple list of pages. So we have locations, guest list, photographers, rehearsal dinner, and at least three of those are databases. For instance, the first one, locations, if we jump into that, you can see we have things like the name of the place that we could potentially have the ceremony at. We have the website so that then I can go and see the information that they've got on that place. I have things like the higher price, the priority rating. That was just something that Vogel and I put in so that we could see which ones were our preferred venues versus other ones. And just like any database that we have in Notion, you can add whatever information you need. And I didn't necessarily start with all of these either. I went and added them in as things cropped up and I thought, oh, it'd be good to have that in there as well. For instance, when we started narrowing down our list, I then started comparing the wedding packages and saying, okay, do they offer a rehearsal? Do they come with a coordinator or a planner? Do we have guest parking? All of that kind of thing. That's also why you can see that a chunk of these venues don't actually have that information included in there because by that point we'd kind of ruled them out. Jumping back to the main wedding plans page and into the guest list though, this is where I'm keeping track of all of the people we're inviting, whether they're actually coming. And as RSVPs come in, I'm gonna keep track of other information like dietary requirements, anything like that. Mainly because if I keep it in a digital space, it's very easy to just print it off and give it to anybody else who needs to know. While we were figuring out our guest list, we went and gave everybody a priority rating, mainly so we could see how many people we had in each kind of like tier of our guest list, I suppose you could say. So for instance, if we scroll to the top, looking at my critical people list, these are people who like, if they're not there, I'm not getting married. For that list, we had 18 people versus our full guest list, which had something like 71 people. The nice part is that Notion can just do a count for me. I don't have to go and count every individual entry. The wedding plan space is also one that I wanted to be able to share with other people. So you can see in the top right, I am sharing it with Vogel because I wanted both of us to be able to update this as things were happening. Wedding planning isn't just gonna be my job. Like it'll primarily be my job, but he gets a say in things too. While this is just me starting to play around with Notion to plan my wedding, one of the best parts is I don't have to start from scratch. If we press on the templates button here, we can find a range of different templates that have been made by people in the Notion community. And if we type wedding into the search bar, we can see what templates other people have made. There are a bunch of different ones for me to pick from and I am actually really excited to go and have a look at them and see what kind of things I can bring into my own system. I don't necessarily have to use their template exactly as they've made it. Once I copy it into my own workspace, I can change things, I can tweak things and I can really just make it my own. When it comes to making it your own, another fun personalization feature they've recently added was Notion Faces. This effectively allows you to make a little cartoon version of yourself that you can use as your Notion display picture if you want to. And you can see that Marie Poulin has used hers for her Notion Marketplace ID. As a sucker for any kind of game that allows me to make a custom character, this was really fun. I love going through, trying on the different styles and trying to make a character that somewhat resembles me in a more cartoonish way. All of the different features have been hand drawn by a Notion illustrator and I just think it's a cute feature. Another life area that I'm excited to use Notion for though is what I'm calling my second brain. This is effectively gonna be like a one-stop shop for all of the information that I wanna store digitally. At the moment, it's mainly just holding my content calendar, but I also wanna bring in things like projects, notes, tasks related to the projects and possibly related to the notes. Essentially turning it into kind of like a wiki for my life, being able to record anything I'm interested in, anything I'm learning about, and record it in such a way that that information is easily accessible, searchable, and shareable. I know that as I start to build this out, the template that Notion has on offer in the marketplace and also just the flexibility of the system is really gonna lend itself to recording all of that. I wanna be able to capture and organize the information in the way that it's gonna be best laid out, not only for just general organization, organizational purposes, but also for making sense of it in my brain. 
As said, Notion is my favorite digital productivity tool, which makes sense because I've used it for over four years now. To get started on Notion for free and create your custom portrait, use the link in the description box below. And if you wanted to grab my free content planner template, then that one's linked down there too. Remember, you don't have to just use it for YouTube. You can use it to plan any type of content and you can actually use it to plan pretty much anything. You just need to tweak it to suit your own needs. That's the best part of a flexible system like Notion. You can make it for whatever you want. Notion is effectively the digital version of my bullet journal to the extent that I actually made a digital bullet journal in Notion. If you wanted to see what that would look like, then this video is the next one to check out. In that one, I walk you through how I used Notion to set up a digital bullet journal system. So click or tap on that one and I'll see you over there.